Okay, let's let's start. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Jagdish Janla. I, I work as a Chief Operating Officer at FABA, Federation of Asian Biotech Association. It, it's a pleasure to see you all here. I mean, uh, the main aim of having you all here is, is basically to bring Hyderabad license ecosystem together. It's an honor to have Dr. Renu Swaroop here. I'm pleasure to have you here. So without further ado, I would like to invest, uh, uh, invite uh, Dr. Jeet Taru Sharma, Director of NAAB, to come and welcome everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Jagdish. Uh, wonderful CEO, CEO you are. We have been witnessing it. Uh, very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, most respected uh, chair of this afternoon's meeting, uh, respected uh, Rainy Surup, madam. Former Secretary DBT, Professor Redana. Faba uh, and Professor Redana uh, cannot be inseparable. So I think Lester is moved. And uh, to join that adjacent to Madam is uh, Dr. Dipan Vita from IKP. And uh, the trio, and uh, they all thought to be at NIAB. And of course, from NIAB side, uh, we all are here. Uh, this very uh, important meeting, the Hyderabad uh, Life Sciences uh, Interactive Session, and first of its own uh, with a very apt topic that is One Health. And I'm sure uh, both would agree with me, and uh, surely this was uh, Madam Marino's uh, brainchild to get One Health ignited from this very institute. And uh, the Panvita and Professor Redana will agree with me that NIAB is correctly chosen and rightly chosen place. So I welcome on behalf uh, of NIAB and on my own behalf, everyone present out here for an important meeting. And this become personally important to NIAB fraternity as today we celebrate our 12th Foundation Day. Thank you. So what more a research institute uh, wants, but food for thought and uh, more of an ignition, mental ignition. And this is a scientific feast today, which we have been celebrating, uh, which started with Madam's lecture and this lecture series. So it has become more historical for us that the very first lecture of this uh, life science cluster uh, started from NIAB on its foundation day. Thank you very much. And uh, I uh, welcome once again, I look forward to it. I think you'd be wondering what is this Hyderabad Life Sciences Interactive Series or everything. So I would like to invite Professor Edena, who is the Executive President of FABA, uh, to talk more about it. I think Sarah will talk, also talk about the last uh, February event, which was a grand success. Hyderabad Life Science Innovation Cluster Meet. So it's like a continuation where we where we bring people together and basically ask them to talk and collaborate. Yes. Thank you, Jagdish. Uh, let me join Dr. Taru Sharma in extending you warm welcome to this Hyderabad Life Sciences Interactive Meeting lecture series, which is being inaugurated today by Dr. Devi Kurupan. So welcome you, Madam, for readily accepting to inaugurate this lecture series. We missed you at the Gino Valley Life Sciences Cluster meeting, uh, where uh, we had uh, interaction between uh, academy and industry. But uh, fortunate to, to have you physically again here uh, um, for this uh, interactive lecture series. Uh, so the Federation of Asian Biotech Association, which started its journey in 2004, right? mainly to promote the academy and industry interactions so that innovative products, innovative research could happen. And with that aim, the Federation of Asian Biotech was started. And as part of that, we have initiated the BioAsia which has provided a black home for academy industry government, not only from India, but uh, all over the world. 
And so during this journey, we felt that there is a gap between academy and industry in human resource development. In 2020, we launched the FABA Academy, which is uh, uh, mainly to promote uh, the skill development activity and career guidance to the student community. And the third vertical that uh, FABA started was uh, that FABA Entrepreneurship Division. Thanks to the BIRAC and other agencies, a large number of startups have come up in the country. And uh, with that initial grant, they have come up with the hope that they will be able to come up with innovative products. But um, the next level of funding is the major problem constraint that many of the startups are facing in the country. And that is where we thought of, you know, FABA should take initiatives to address not only the finance problem, big ticket funding, but also other problems that uh, startups are facing. And we have conducted, we launched that uh, FABA entrepreneurship division with the Whale Tank event. The Whale Tank is much about the, the shark tank uh, that is being done. And as part of that, uh, we have involved all the incubation, major incubation centers in the country. And uh, also we have invited the, the, uh, the on one side, uh, VCs all around the world. On the other side, the, the promising startups. And we have showcased the promising startups to the VCs. And not only that, we also have circulated with these promising startups to big karma and by the company also. And that is the beginning, and this we will be conducting series of uh, such activities to promote the startup ecosystem in the country. So the FABA, as a part of this, you know, uh, we have been uh, instrumental in bringing the academy and industry. The one that we did in Geno Valley was there in that. And in addition to that, it is the brainchild of uh, Deepan Vitan that. Uh, Whenever the distinguished scientists or administrators and visitors are coming, we should have a meeting, an interactive uh, meeting with the distinguished speaker. So with that concept, this Hyderabad Life Sciences Interactive Meeting Series was conceived. And uh, initially, we were thinking of having it in Geno Valley. But as Dr. Tadu Sharma was mentioning, they have a major program going on in Atenayali on One Health. And the concept of the lecture series is also on One Health. So why not we have it at Atenayali? And Dr. Karu Sharma immediately accepted. And Deepanvita also accepted to come all the way along with the, a battalion of startups also. <laughs> so thank you everyone for uh, coming up coming here. I once again uh, welcome you all on behalf of the FABA for this interactive lecture series. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think that the terminology, one health, planetary health, global health, international health, so many things are there. So I request Deepan Mitavam to explain what is this one health concept. Thank you. Uh, a very, very warm welcome to Dr. Renu Swaroop. Uh, thank you, Dr. Taru Sharma, for accommodating our request at the last moment. This is wonderful to be here. I don't need to explain what One Health is sitting here. So, you know, when Dr. Redena said that uh, FABA and IKP should do something in Genome Valley, uh, Dr. Swaroop is coming. I said, absolutely, it should be at IKP. And then he said, what, is, what would be the topic? And uh, I had discussed with Dr. Swaroop at least maybe 10 times uh, in the last two years regarding starting a One Health incubator. And Dr. Swaroop 
had asked what would be different in this incubator that you're not doing with other startups. Yes, startups would work in the area of plant health, uh, animal health, and uh, human health at the confluence of these three. But will that actually change the approach to life and the planet for a better future? And we said, yes, we have to do it. And let's put a concept paper together and let's do something. And uh, so Bindu Nishal, Dr. Bindu Nishal from IKP uh, has been working in this area. And thanks to Dr. Swaroop, we finally decided to launch a cohort. And then Dr. Edda said, she's coming and she's coming to NIAB. I said, if we don't launch it now, it would be such a miss. So immediately I told Dr. Redner that the topic has to be One Health, One Health approach. And this would be a great place to actually start a discussion on One Health, NIAB being the right location, and also to launch our first cohort on One Health. I would like to actually request uh, Dr. Swaroop to tell us why she thinks One Health would actually provide us direction for a better future. L love to hear that because we've been talking of a future that is more sustainable, a future that we all look forward to. And uh, it will be wonderful to hear Dr. Swaroop. This is an interactive talk. And when we say interactive talk, it would also be just not a lead speaker, but a lot of other people present here interacting. And for that, of course, we have our moderator of the day. Uh, so with that, uh, are you going to invite Dr. Swaroop or should I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that means we have the presentation and citation. And who's going to do that? You're going to announce that? Why don't you come up? And Dr. Redana and uh, Dr. Ratnakar. And you have to say that why this is so important for us. For the, yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, excellence. the biggest and the toughest task is uh, to you know, read the citation and also introduce uh, Dr. Enos Varoop. I don't know in the room uh, if there is anyone who can say that um, you don't know about Dr. Enos Varoop. So, <laughs> so on a lighter note, uh, there was actually a meeting uh, which I was supposed to attend from Bairat today in Bangalore. I said, I have to request you for a postponement for tomorrow. They said, what reason? I said, uh, your boss is in Hyderabad and uh, you, no, they didn't accept that. They didn't accept that. Then they said, we have no choice. So it's actually been postponed to tomorrow. <laughs> so it gives me immense pleasure uh, to uh, you know, read the citation of uh, Dr. Renu Swaroop. As we all know, she's the former secretary of Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. She has been instrumental in the planning and implementation of various national programs, we all know. And she's actively engaged in the formulation of national biotechnology vision and strategy. She served as the member of the task force on women in science by the scientific advisory committee to the prime minister. As the secretary of DBT government of India, she led a network of 16 autonomous research institutes, two public sector undertakings and R&D network of more than 5,000 projects across 100 research institutes, universities and laboratories. During COVID pandemic, she led the COVID vaccine, diagnostic, and genome sequencing mission. She was the founding managing director and the chairperson of the Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, BIRAC, and has supported more than 5,000 startups and 60 incubators. Dr. Renu Swaroop received many awards, including Biospectrum Person of the Year, National Entrepreneurship Award, Thai Woman Enabler Award, Lifetime Achievement Award, Agriculture Research Leadership Award, and so many for the public service. Today, FABA is 
honored and we, it would be a privilege for all of us to felicitate you madam for dr b s bajaj memorial faba excellence award for the year 2023 so towards that uh, may i request uh, the executive council members of faba uh, madam uh, maybe uh, dipan vita may i also request you to join on the stage along with all of us <laughs> but that's not the qualification by the way so thank you very much is all i can say i i truly feel humbled and honored with this so very wonderful thank you dr edna dipan vita taru jagdish the entire team for ratnakar everyone here i can't name everyone individually but um, first of all thank you very much for this honor that you have done and uh, yes dr edna the fact that i couldn't be with you in february you still accommodated it and took this out as a special function when i'm here on the foundation day of niab uh, thank you very much for that but uh, more than anything else let me say it's indeed such a pleasure to be here with all of you all uh, covid took away 3 years of ours where we couldn't meet physically we have continued to meet virtually which of course was the strength of the technology which allowed us to stay connected but uh, how long can you have only virtual connections you need to keep renewing them you know it's like those uh, ev vehicles you need to go back to the charging stations <laughs> charge your batteries and then only can you run on for long so these are our charging stations So we need to come back, and then of course, if required, save time, save costs, bring in the carbon credits with less travel, and uh, meet virtually as much as you can, because you need to stay more connected now. COVID has clearly taught us the importance of connections, the importance of working together, and that Panvita is key. to your issue about one health what's really the importance of one health why one health i think it's those connections in one health 
which are so important. We all talked about it. And yes, very rightly said, we've been talking about One Health, we've been talking about AMR, we've been talking about environmental action. And we've been we've been talking about research in that area for many, many years, components of One Health research. But what we forgot was, till you don't make those connections very strong, they're not going to give you the end point of what you want, and that is One Health. We keep saying what is One Health and I don't think we're talking about One Health today. If you go back to study the literature, probably it was somewhere the 19th century or something where we all started bringing out the importance of One Health. We gave it different definitions. We highlighted it in different fora. Um, WHO came on, then the tripartite and then the quadripartite. I don't know whether it will become penta or whatever it will become. but the UN for a UNGA, everyone started talking about these issues. <clears throat> but I think what center staged the importance of One Health was COVID. That gave us a very clear understanding that you have to be prepared for these unforeseen, uh, you know, sudden. I won't say let's hope we don't have any more pandemics, but any such disasters which come forward. And health disasters are, are so very important, be it human, animal, plant, environmental, all of them. In the last uh, IKMC meeting, Dipanvita had done a very good session on uh, One Health and uh, in link to the sustainable goals, that was what your key topic was. I couldn't come in physically at that time, but I did get a flavor of what you spoke. And I think it's so important that when you have this and the fact that you're having a Hyderabad um, lecture series on a One Health approach, and I really, really please Dipanvita that you're launching your cohort, you're taking this activity forward. It's more than anything else, center staging that important priority, which we generally keep in our mind, but just keep it on the peripheries. You know, we, we don't sort of bring it in the forefront. Why do we do that? Not that we undermine the importance of this, but when we talk about EMR or we talk about One Health or we talk about related, we say, yes, we're doing a lot in it. You know that we are doing diagnostics for uh, infectious diseases. We are doing tuberculosis. We are doing animal diseases. We have people who are working on vaccines. We have people who are working on diagnostics. Uh, we are doing environmental AMR surveillance. We are doing water monitoring. Everything we are doing. But what are we connecting as an outcome for One Health? That gets lost. And that really was the main focus when um, I know that Dipanvita, it was two years back or three years back when you actually launched or announced the start of an incubator. And I know Bindu has been working with you and taking this activity. We also had international discussions. I'm aware of the fact that you've been engaging with Australia and other countries to try and see how you connect this on a, on a global network. The importance is that you are now giving it a very special focus to say that you're not going to do different things, but you're going to do different things with a common goal and a common objective. An incubator is very important because we've seen the success of incubators. We've seen the success of an incubation ecosystem. We've seen that an incubation ecosystem is a platform which connects the research to translation, to application. And that is because uh, this morning when I was talking to the young researchers here, I was mentioning this, that you need to create these clusters, these knowledge clusters, which actually allow a seamless flow of knowledge from research to product, to technology. 
And that's really what a One Health incubator will add value to. I'm sure the startups that you have have been working on these activities. We've been supporting them. We've been working with them, but giving them a common focus to deliver on. What is also important is globally, we keep talking about the One Health approach. As I said, all international fora, all um, high level tables, discussions are there. Uh, every nation was given the mandate to set up a national action plan for AMR. Uh, I was just talking to Dr. Redana and he was informing me about how uh, you did a meeting in Vijayawada a couple of months back to bring out a knowledge network report on a national action plan for the state. We don't have very many states in the country, but yes, India was one of the key uh, countries to have a national action plan. In fact, uh, I think there are over 150, 170 countries which have national action plans for EMA. Just talk about one component of One Health because that came as a, as a guidance from WHO. But when you go down to the actual ground level, how many have actually implemented those action plans? Not many. So it's important for us to understand what are the key problems in implementation of these action plans. And One Health is, it's not different. I mean, I'm talking about a component of One Health AMR. One Health is similar. You don't have a direction for a One Health action plan from WHO, but I think we've all agree. Even G20 today, uh, when we are having India's presidency, uh, One Health is actually coming up as a topic of discussion in two or three different working groups. It's there very much in the health working group. Um, I'm glad that it was there. It was sort of getting sidelined and then it got into the center. The science, uh, the chief science advisors group, I was talking to um, Dr. Mani, who's the scientific secretary, and India's been hosting the chief science advisors meet. I unfortunately could not be with them in their Ramgarh meeting in March, but it's come in there as well. So what is important is that when we're looking at an action plan to be developed, what are the components? So it's not different from other action plans. I think what is now going to be important is, one is you're starting this whole, um, we're going to have the series discussion today, and I'm sure there'll be interesting outcomes to take it forward. But more importantly, how is an incubator going to make a difference? That's that's really the key question Dipan that I asked. One is what I said, of course, giving it an important focus and giving it an important connection. But I think it's also very important because the outcomes which come out with this sort of a collaborative research or collaborative uh, translational activity, which brings in synergies of different groups, are key to guiding the policies which get made for taking action of it. We keep saying <clears throat> our policies for implementation are not being followed by state governments, but, but we need to give them the right tools to be able to take it into their policies. And lunchtime, I was talking to Dr. Edna and he was explaining to me about a tool that they've made, which along with uh, some team, they're now taking it into states for different uh, diagnostic uh, activities. Uh, Prabhu said in One Health, they're looking at surveillance. We talk about this as research, but if we actually bring out the, the products, those tools, instruments, and make the policy makers a part of this, they will be able to adopt these to take their policy decisions. <clears throat> we saw it happening in COVID. And that's why I keep referring to it. If COVID was fought by each of our stakeholders, it's because the state governments played a very important role. State is a health subject, uh, health is a state subject. But we gave them the tools to be able to do that. We started surveillance networks, <laughs> which were existing. We only sort of created those <laughs> models around it and said, okay, can we take this forward? We created these little laboratories that uh, 
we created these little laboratories around their primary healthcare centers and others to see how we could take the diagnostic. So if we make the tools available to them, <laughs> they will see value in it and be able to implement it. We give them a set of policies and say you must do that, but then there's no scientific data or you know something that we've demonstrated with great uh, ability to say that it works. Please understand it's a very complex system that exists and public health and all matters related to One Health do fall under that key public health activity is a very complex structure. So we must be able to bring out that focus in through our, because incubation centers will allow you to create these startups which sort of work with, you know, ground level activities. So, they, you know, we've done some very wonderful uh, programs through our startup initiatives and uh, many of you have been engaged with our startup activities. No, are these immersion programs. In our immersion programs, we have done, one was of course our uh, clinical immersion program that we did for our uh, Stanford Biodesign activity, where our entrepreneurs worked with the clinicians and hospitals to understand the need, fill up the gaps and then <coughs> develop their <coughs> innovations for it. We also launched one in the Birax Spark program. I think those sort of immersions are very important. The incubator that you set up must have connections with the ground level activities. Your incubators who are starting this whole activity of One Health, because must remember one thing that One Health is not just a commercially driven activity. It's, it's an important activity of societal relevance which needs the ground level machinery to be closely engaged and involved. You must look at a model which has a ground level, a field immersion program, understand what their needs are. Why are those people not being able to implement? If you tell them that you must do a proper surveillance program, whether they have to do animal disease surveillance or they have to do their environmental <clears throat> water monitoring activities, they will say, yes, we need to do that. But do they have a standardized package of practices which tells them how to do that? I was recently working with a group uh, which had, uh, along with the, uh, with the one of the Swedish partnership programs, we're trying to work out what could be the best practices that we give to the uh, pollution control boards to look at water monitoring. And how do we bring in a tool in which, especially the pharma industry, and this is key for Hyderabad, can do their self-monitoring of the water, the effluence um, water. And not only do their self-monitoring, but do a self-certification. Now, everyone said, that's not going to happen. You're not going to get a self-certification. I said, why do you say that? Please understand, they're citizens of this country of this planet. They're responsible scientists. At the moment, we're not giving them a proper package of practices to say, this is what you need to do and you can work this out. So I think these, this is only one different example, but these are tools that we need to bring up. If you're going to ask them to do environmental um, or water monitoring activities and then give them a complex set of uh, you don't give them a proper diagnostic methodology or they have to take all the samples, send it to a centralized laboratory sitting in Delhi. They will do the analysis and send it's not going to happen. And then two years down the line, we'll say we made an action plan. Even if Dr. Edna, you write the best action plan for your state, after two years, when you assess it, you'll say it's not worth. Because we haven't made it possible for them to work. I think what you are now taking up is key and crucial. Where your startups, you know, our, our mindset is such that when we talk about startups, we immediately think of setting up an enterprise and that enterprise must have investors, it must get investments, and you must have those business models which attract global markets and don't. Startups play a very important role, even in our public health system, in our societal needs. And there are different ways. There are 
social innovation is key to it and there is a lot of traction today for social innovation we do have investments you have the investors here so i can't talk about people who are the gurus in investment to tell them where the investment will come from but there is potential for it i think it's important how we give it a slightly different growth trajectory yet so very important that there is traction for it and i think dipanvita your incubator and this discussion that hyderabad is to be arranged is so important to set the stage i'm sure you'll have many others following you nationally and globally both ways there is going to be um, you know traction for it i would also like to conclude by saying this that let's put for ourselves our own assessment parameters how are we going to assess the the progress that we have made or how are we going to assess how this is going to succeed we can't have the same kpis and the same other parameters that you put in for this because this is going to be a difficult task you know we started a, a dairy related innovation program which we had done with um, the <clears throat> ministry of animal husbandry and others and there we were looking at different dairy technologies that we would want to bring in and my first point to them was we brought in so many but they said the the farmers are not being able to take advantage of it so we said okay you do a village level immersion program this was in sonipat and that area of punjab when they went in for that they realized they didn't even have the basics of a baseline survey that did not exist so leave aside anything else when you actually get your startups to start working and looking at field level immersion activities you will realize that you don't even have a baseline survey of what is essential not that people didn't realize the importance of it nobody actually documented it at one place you'll find it in pocket somewhere else so i think there is a lot to be done and i'm so glad that you're starting with it because once you start with it you'll see that there'll be so much you can build upon it and i think your biggest success would be since you have already worked as a knowledge partner with the state your tools your processes get adopted by the state for initially to begin with for your own action plan implementation and that is going to be a starting point where you can then take it to other states and take on so all my good wishes to you all compliments to you and thank you all once again <clears throat> for this more than anything else i said i'm so happy to meet all friends after so very long and i really wish you all best of luck for taking this very important initiative forward thank you thank you so much Thank you, ma'am. I mean, ma'am's speech reminded me of my postdoctoral work last year with Technical University of Munich. We were working on One Health. The, the problem with One Health when we were working was the the, the perception what uh, what my colleagues had was it's it's a poor man's thing. Like we were working in Africa and everything. But once now the, the way how Dipanvita ma'am has built One Health incubator, this was I think we couldn't think of. So the the thing that we were discussing was how to make business. from one health and how to attract industries i think what you have done is phenomenal ma'am i request dr bindu to come and launch one health core Good afternoon, everybody. Am I audible? I can hear myself. <laughs> All right. So um, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Renu Swaroop for setting a very apt stage for the next part of the program today. And it is really my honor and privilege to announce our very first cohort of startups, which are focused 
towards one goal of solving global One Health challenges. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what this incubator is going to do. Okay. So as Dr. Harris was mentioning, we have established this incubator uh, in October 2021. And this was like I joined uh, when COVID had hit the world and the government had declared this uh, as a pandemic. Uh, there was a discussion right after that between the founders of MD about what can we do to solve for mitigation. The challenge of the pandemic for India and the world. So, COVID 19 and the missing world have made it abundantly clear without an iron of doubt that all living beings of the life forms on this planet are interconnected and interdependent. As we all know, climate change is no longer in the risk that it is not changing. And if you're following the news globally, Mankind has indeed reached the benchmark of 1.5 degrees, thereby making global collaboration and deployment for these solutions within India and globally, making it easy for these solutions to be deployed because one health cannot be called this It is a global challenge. Thank you. And innovators as well as entrepreneurs are going to indeed play a very critical role in solving these challenges. So the International One Health Incubator, FIKT, was therefore born global. It is intentionally a virtual incubator focused on solving some of these challenges with the aim to provide customized, because each startup requires a different set of support network from uh, IKP and our larger network to reach or take their technologies to the next level. These may include fundraising, selecting them to the market, commercialization, like I said, within India and globally, uh, IT support, et cetera. So the IOHI is an attempt also to transition the One Health approach, bring about a mind, mindset change in thinking about or having a planet-centric viewpoint to One Health rather than just a human-centric one. Can we go to the next question? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, Same principle. Okay, this one slide actually pretty much sums it all. What has been discussed, what was talked about by the Pandita, by Dr. Tavi Sharma, and by Dr. Renu Saru about the interconnectedness. And it's my really my privilege and an honor to introduce these five starters. And some of them are have joined us online. And we have uh, one company, one startup for which the representation we actually have uh, physically over here. So we all know uh, this is the, the Venn diagram, the overlap and the optimal health outcome between environmental health, human health and animal health is when you receive, uh, you reach one health. So we have a company and let's begin Casper, who is a VIG awardee and a recently uh, conducted Agri Grand Challenge awardee, which is involved in environmental health as well as human health. Similarly, there is uh, Helix Analytica, which is a diagnostic-based new company which is involved in the diagnosis and prediction for human health and animal health. Microgo is in the prevention space for human health and they've gone into food safety and food security. So we've made a number of these connections between uh, what these companies are doing individually. And as Dr. Swarov pointed out, we've given them a focus that we are solving one common problem or challenge of one health. So I'm going to present a few, um, you know, little information about these uh, these companies. Uh, the first one is Control V, very aptly called for the damage that humans have made to the planet. They are they have taken their technology is to um, to have clean water to have it's a wastewater reform company 
And we have uh, Pavel from the company over here. And it's, they're using a beautiful technology of using aggregate. Sorry. To convert it into biography, which is then used. Which is then used for purifying water. Yeah. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I'm the co-founder of Control Kids. Control is a carbon removal slash water recovery company. We all know that plants absorb carbon dioxide from their atmosphere. But do we know that when we say plants die and decompose, they emit carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere? Control is an innovative technology which is natural cycle to download the decarbonization of carbon dioxide in we convert agricultural waste into high value advanced carbon materials such as graphene generators. Our first product is a graphene generator system, which is used for system of industrial waste. The system is to capture the contaminants and filter them out the water system. And this is the compound after carbon dioxide to produce water. Thank you so much. Our next company is Chenix Analytica, which is founded by uh, Rohan Paris. It's a multifaceted technology uh, driven company with the aim to address the complexities of disease surveillance and respond to global biological threats faster, quicker, and much more efficiently. The third company as part of the cohort is Microgo. And this is not an old company. It's, it's very well known to the IKP family, part of the big uh, award, as well as our ICO fund uh, and the coverage award. Founded by Dr. Rashna Dave, it aims to advance public health via One Health. Um, started with uh, providing technology solutions in the preventive stage, they have evolved to solutions in the food safety and security, besides environmental sustainable solutions.
fourth company as part of this cohort is a plant a biological company uh, called Chapter, uh, founded by Mr. Manoj Kumar. Their offerings include uh, affordable, eco friendly organic farm inputs for sustainable and climate resilient agriculture. Sorry. Uh, and the last company as part of the first cohort is Arturo Biotech. And uh, it's founded by Dr. Praveen Sapa and Dr. Kishore, who are with us today. And it's involved in upcycling plant based, traceable, low value organic byproducts from agri processing companies into animal feed. So uh, I would like him to maybe speak for 30 seconds. Can I please invite you here? So there's our uh, company here. So we do uh, upcycle organic residues into, uh, we do upcycle organic residues uh, into insect ingredients, uh, which are primarily supplied to livestock industry. So the insect ingredients uh, primarily uh, uh, contain insect protein and fats that go into pet food and aquaculture. That's our primary product. Uh, but then uh, there is a lot more to this insect technology uh, than using them as simply a commodities, which is insect biotech verticals, wherein uh, you can see a few molecules, a few verticals that we have been working for the last one and a half years, wherein uh, there are a lot of treasure trove of molecules that can be uh, discovered from insects that can be applied to the well being of both humans, uh, plants, and animals. So, this is our a concept and we have been working for this and hope to meet you guys, uh, a lot of people on the same. Thank you very much. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Tarvi Sharma for giving us this opportunity, Dr. Renu Swaroop for being here and Professor Redana and all these startups. Um, IKP is very uh, honored to have this opportunity to create a dent in the world, uh, the One Health, uh, you know, ecosystem within India as well as globally. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank Dipanvita also. I forgot to mention. <laughs> You're always there. Thank you. So we have a new director of the medical college, Institute INS, new doctor, Rebecca Singhar. So Thank you, everyone. Now we'll have a simple interactive series. Will be moderated by yeah, uh, Dr. Uday Saxena. <laughs> yeah, may I also request uh, Dr. Renu Swaroop, Professor Redena, Department, ma'am, and Taru, ma'am, please come on to the stage.
a simple interactive series and i think audience can ask anything <laughs> <laughs> right. the zoom microphone is just one so somehow we get our yeah <laughs> no when you when you're on the stage uh, you're under pressure how much time They need a mic too. <clears throat> so uh, I think as the experts sit down, uh, we are going to digress a little bit and I really want to pick their brains because the Hyderabad Innovation Cluster is a host here. I really want to pick their brains about how, um, you know, startups have a lot of challenges. You only hear about one or two of them, but being a startup myself, I hear I have a lot of challenges. So I've written some of them down. And what I'd really like to do is ask them and see if the panelists can address them if there's any feedback from the audience, I think. So before I do that, I just want to say, somebody, uh, Dr. Swaroop was saying what an incubator needs to do, right? I think I've incubated for four years now. The number one thing incubators have to do, not everybody is going to win the race. You have to identify which companies you think are going to win the When I say win the race, launch a product. Patent, newspaper articles, totally irrelevant. You have to get a product out on the market. So as people who run incubators, you have to identify out of the 50, there might be four. Pay special attention to them. Make sure they don't fall through the cracks. Because these are young people, not me, but others are very young people. There's a tendency to get drawn into various kinds of you know, things that uh, are there. So you, I think that would be my strong recommendation as people who are running incubators, identify your stars, don't let go of them. I think that's critical, critical, critical. Right, like Amitabh Bachchan, nobody knew till he had a hit. So startups, their hit is to get a product out there. Not patent, not newspapers, not anything else. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, um, I mean, we have really, really people who have run Indian science, actually. This, I don't need to introduce anymore, but you know, the best part about Dr. Suru, very simple, very articulate, and clarity of thought, right? That's another thing startups need to have. Is I often ask people, where will you win five years? They'll stay here only. That's not what I'm asking, right? <laughs> so the clarity of thought can only come from listening and observing and uh, talking to such people. So I'm just going to, I, I see a lot of startup CEOs and people here. So I want to ask some questions on their behalf. Uh, and then maybe we, we, you know, we can have them respond. My first question is there. Uh, I don't want to zoom. I'll just do it from here. Ah, okay. okay. I mean, I just don't want to be so close to them. That <laughs> it's not, I'm not in that league, so yeah. I, I think. No, they are. Yes, I got it. I'm camera side. <laughs> Uh, I think my first question to you, and this is out to Dr. Lenny Swaru. I've been doing this for the fifth year. Not one day goes without me thinking, what should be my plan B? Very good chance I may not be able to launch a product. And I've sacrificed should be plan B for a young entrepreneur 
sales in your demand to find out what to do in your opinion since as you know seven out of 10 companies are going to fail startup company so there's a huge majority of people who unfortunately have no idea you know they're still in their honeymoon and they don't know that one honeymoon and reality hit so uh, did you am i did i say that right <laughs> Excellent. I mean, that's just brilliant. Again, the clarity is just so amazing. I've learned something out of what you just said. I'm not giving up yet, but <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to ask you, and then I, I see a lot of startups here, and I know them by name, so I'll ask you to ask a question, okay? Uh, please, maybe I see you there, so. 
Uh, my, this is my question to Dr. Dipanjita. I mean, she's really brilliantly read intub uh, led the incubators and uh, see that. One of the things I know that Dr. Dipanjita is once you get to the five year point, right? A lot of people like me who are scientists, we are so passionate, we think our idea is the best. But in time when a CEO scientist, which very, I, have, I have a working knowledge of business, uh, but uh, they need to make that transition from being a business a scientist CEO to a business CEO. In India, I have never seen that. And that I think is a short, short recipe for failure, I'm telling you. However good the idea is, end of the day, you make money by selling. Who sells it? Not me. It has to be a business person who sells it. What would, first of all, do you think this observation is true? And what would your incubator do? Mentorship, I'm telling you, very superficial. You know, they see me the day they ask. After that, they are not out of mind, out of sight. Right? So what do you think the startup should do to make that? Excellent, thank you. I mean, one of the things I notice is it's like diabetes, right? You don't know you have it till you go to a doctor. Same thing, most scientists, CEOs don't know they need an entrepreneur to the nail. So, as an incubator, you have to keep an eye on those also and say, buddy, I, I think this is not going the right way. Thank you so much. I think some of those suggestions are brilliant. I'm going to ask Professor <laughs> You know, we've been talking about academia, industry, they need to work together, and this happens, that happens. Five years now, I think we've been talking, nothing has happened. Why is that? <laughs> if somebody... <laughs>
Thank you very much. I, I agree with you. I think the efforts are there, and it just takes one or two high-profile relationships to have. I think, for example, for Merck partners with the University of Hyderabad, that is just going to be wildfire. I think so. Those high-profile hopefully will happen. I don't think I'll come from India to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. True, very true. Thank you. Thank you so much for so my last question is to Dr. Sharma. Dr. Sharma, the change in um Preclinical discovery is shifting away from animals to alternate to animal tools. I have four years of 3D bioprinting as the alternate. And regulatory agencies, so DESCO, FDA, everybody is now mandating that you have to 
limit the use of animals. So I have a lot of students who come to me and say, sir, I got a master's in fully based on you know, animals. Uh, what do I do now? So what is NIAB? What do you What should be the to ensure that this anything? To accommodate what the market needs are. You know, you do to work for the but the market needs clearly a shift also. And then you need to understand what the market needs. Thank you. So I have a question to to answer what Yanti was two points. So I will be very straightforward in saying the regulatory body is one time. Everything uh, is not possible in the in the organized way of infrastructure. You have to have the program study so, you know, uh, you should be having, especially I mean, focus on veterinary vaccine. Unless until you have got veterinary studies in those four channels, how could you really take it to a good one to the large animals? So, uh, the first point I'm trying to make is. Regulatory body needs to understand. It's something like, you know, uh, not exactly, but how much time GM uh, uh, was going on this year, that day. Eventually they came forward, but still there are a lot of things. Right. Right. Likewise, it is very difficult for us to do. Up to rabbit, rat, we need to be fine. Today we are given five goats or uh, two uh, cattle or five buffaloes. It is uh, researchers, you know, like there. When will I get a CCPA clear? Now the name is changed. So, regulatory uh, policy body has to understand it. Yes. Number, yes. number two, uh, the very body has to be very important. The free thing is that in the not, for example, large animals, I would say. So the industry should also really come up in those areas when people fail and all. So when they really go ahead for them, we should also understand what people need as we have been. So industry can really be quite for them. Yeah. So they should really be supportive of it. It's not only it has to be a symbiotic. So sure. we need each other. And the government is so very clear that it has to be a cohesive mode. Excellent. Yeah, thank you so much. I think this is something that will keep coming up. You know, so your clarity of thought again is really so we just gotta take three questions and then uh at least we have time for three questions. Okay. Uh so Sridavi, what was your question? Please. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
Very true.
Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, I, I was going to add a point. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we need to put them out there. Yeah. So I think the uh, understanding of the marketing and uh, uh, it was very, very important. And yeah. uh, I
I think yeah. travel grant of $2,500 for going to the bio. Don't worry, if not this year, next year, this will not expire until you don't want it and it becomes so small for you. Yeah, so this is a small criteria which we have used uh, to select these things. But most importantly, these are the outstanding innovators who built these companies and the startups, but uh, the technology and uh, you know they were able to put these teams and grow in a very short time. And uh, yeah, so as ma'am told, this is an election. So IKP team has elected actually these uh, six startups from the 350 plus in Hyderabad. So this first cohort is from Hyderabad. And I would like to, yes, I would like to request uh, bikers. You can, you all please come with the team and Lodi, Monitra, Parishodhana, Startoon Labs, and you are advanced therapeutic. Very good. So there is a certificate. Yeah, maybe first I will call bikers, please. So this is uh, Hyderabad University. So maybe I will just describe in a line. Or okay, like... You can describe. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> so Bikas actually is working on developing uh, several biosimilars. One of them is Peglotikase. Uh, as many of you know, it failed in the Canadian market because just because of the cost price and the first line of the BAZ proposal is, uh, you know, instead of 50 lakhs, we can do it in 5 lakhs and they are here. Maybe you can tell briefly in 30 seconds. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting us. 
Thank you. Please stay back, and I request Parishodhana team, Dr. Satyanarayana, and uh, ma'am, you mentioned about you know for profit and not for profit. So actually, the first interaction with uh, Parishodhana is. <laughs> Parithojana has several technologies in the hot and you know cold tin electricity independent and uh, recently they were able to develop a product with uh, Grand Challenge Canada uh, for a pain relief for the menstrual pain relief in the schools there is a large dropout because of these problems and they were able to bring this product and now they are working with the uh, Indian military for a, a warm solution in high altitudes electricity free like they just received the uh, PO for 50 lakh rupees and maybe you can take uh, 30 seconds to just thank you thank you all uh, uh, what we have been doing is uh, you know 100% made in India technologies for generating warm and cold on demand so for the when we first developed the product for a new one health which is basically to prevent hypothermia during transport we started as a medical device uh, for the newborn transport. As things started emerging, we realized the same technology can be used for multitudes of applications. So we have so far supported uh, a few hundred thousand hours for the soldiers in Siachen and other Eastern uh, territory for the country. We are now, uh, as we were doing more in the newborn health, we realized uh, it is the women's health from adolescence all the way will prevent newborn births, let's say 50, 30 years from now. So we thought we should help these uh, young adolescents, same school, study them. So we developed using the same technology, a pain relief patch that can be used by women, discreetly, no order, completely safe. And uh, from there, we now, as we go, we are a hot country, as you see outside, people started asking that they can something be done for cold. So we actually developed an instant non-electric cold pack. Now again, Indian Navy is uh, working with us. We are a recent IHX winner, uh, the collaborator. We will be developing cold jackets for firefighters. So when I hear one health and other aspects, I get very inspired. The same platform technology can be used for multitudes of applications. Uh, this is an honor to be here, and uh, uh, we will keep doing our best and hopefully uh, achieve something significant in here. Thank you. Thank you, Satya. Now I invite uh, Maitreyi from Startoon Labs. So they have developed the PZ, uh, physiotherapy monitoring uh, application that helps in the rehab monitoring to see the effectiveness of the physiotherapy. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Here, here I must mention like, you know, Maitre and Suresh, uh, you know, extension of your depression, they wanted to close the company a few years back and uh, ma'am said, yes, you can close the company, come to the office, they live within one kilometer, they came and uh, now they are here. Next, I request uh, you are advanced therapeutics, uh, Jagan and team, Aparna, please. Not working, we'll just leave back. Oh, oh actually. We had photo this trailer? Yes, there. This is for the case. Ma'am, please come. No, no, please come. One minute you can take me. 30 What is the to So as Dr. Odesh Saxena mentioned that scientists are not very good marketing person. So I want to mention that uh, your therapeutics uh, had a uh, patent and PCT for a product uh, that helped, uh, that is a protein gel, alternative carnial transplant that restored the vision in human uh, uh, studies uh, 20 by 800 to 20 by 50. So <laughs> thank you very much. And now I uh, request uh, Ravi from Monitra. Yeah, just landed. In fact, the people who are touched with one of the thousand and uh, then come to the meeting of athletes, uh, in competition, and four zero of their leisure, you know, peer two, peer three counts, and uh, you know, all this is the support that we receive as well. We are at the stage where uh, we are now present in uh, South of India, West of India. Uh, next 12 months are going to be that we will scale to 10 cities in India. And uh, we are looking at the new rules for international markets as well. Uh, thank you very much for the support. Thank you, Ravi. Uh, next, I would like to invite the uh, next picture, Lozi uh, Kake. So they are developing a platform, uh, AI-based platform for the image analysis. And yeah, he is not a scientist. He's an MBA. You can see already, and which is very good. I, I say it in a positive way. 
and he has grown the team and you know within the one year of the bsc he has a one crore revenue which clearly speaks about i am not uh, pointing about the photo but only one minute so firstly thank you ipc to uh, try not to mind but always felt you know this is my uh, second home so about us so we are an uh, ai based digital business control platform uh, it's a tech tool for first level of teaching for ai and model users and the best part is uh, you know in the last six months we had first phenomenal growth they have, they have we have been part of the first five the days, like this pilot to you. it was launched by the government of india in jan 2023 We are present in India and Africa, currently launching in UAE, and in the last one year we have touched around 300,000 plus lives uh, in India and in Africa. Uh, some of the prominent players who work with us today are very popular names like Apollo Clinics, Dr. Agarwal, Zaid Hospital, Shastri Hospital. Uh, we also work with the Ministry of Health in Nigeria, and one of our global partners is Colgate, who is expanding our solution. Uh, we already have a patent for our oral solution, and uh, we are looking for the next patent as well. May I request all of you to join here, and uh, ma'am, and yes, and I also I request the IKP team. Uh, so as you can see, that there are five BIZ awardees, and uh, Ranjit sir, uh, Ranjit sir is our startup mentor. I request Shivram, Sri Krishna, Bindu, Apurva. Apurva is the present BIZ manager. Sangeeta and Hema. So this is and Uday is our BSc mentor. So yes, sir, please, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, this is uh, Hyderabad. Okay. Sir, please. Yeah, I said BSc mentor. I didn't see. Yes. Just one more minute. Yeah. Yes. Apurva, you can go there. Maitri, you can go. Great. Everyone, and uh, I would like to acknowledge these are IKP fellows, but they are supported by all the incubators across Hyderabad and elsewhere.